welcome back to White Knuckle Racing. Uh, today we are at Roble Road Raceway uh, in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, very, very awesome uh, opportunity that we have this weekend. We're going to be doing something a little bit different, which is uh, road racing uh, in a CIK 206 class of uh, 375 pound weight limit. Uh, but as you can see, look at the straightaway. I believe it's uh, right at 2,000 feet. And then if you look right up here, uh, day one was canceled yesterday weather you can still see that it's uh, obviously a little bit cloudy uh, but they're gonna actually try to condense both days into one uh, so great job Southern Car Club uh, recognizing the, all the racers that traveled from the long distance and uh, did everything they could to get the car ready to be out here and they're gonna try to get it uh, post finals in today so it's gonna be a wonderful day uh, we're gonna go ahead and go down this straight in the full send it mode and we'll see what we got so follow along guys Again, great event hosted by Southern Car Club at Roebling Road Raceway. A lot of racers showed up, even though we had the cancellation of the first day and the bad weather. But I can tell you that it was absolutely well worth it for us. I forgot to turn on the GoPro a little bit past the halfway point of the first race. But luckily, I was able to get the ending. Uh, this is with about two laps to go. John and I have raced uh, together. Uh, Roebling actually earlier in the year. Uh, I was lucky to, to stay in the front pack during the first race and, and just pretty much just cruise along for, for most of the race. Now, this is what's so awesome and so important about uh, road racing. You can see here, we're in the front pack with number 27 and number 11 John right in front of me. We're cru cruising along, um, j just kind of being calm. We start catching the, 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 the leaders, I believe, the, actually no, uh, we were the leaders at this point. Uh, and, and, and this is what I mean by how crucial. So you see how we're all stacked up, no, no real, nobody has a big run or anything like that. But you're gonna see that as soon as that we hit the, the, the straight here, I get off just a little bit to the left and luckily right behind me, I believe it was Jorge, Miguel, and a couple other cards, and we just take all the draft to so watch this. So we're doing fine, we're doing fine, and it's literally like as if somebody kicks the back of the cart and you just start flying. And this is my I am speed at the moment for the event. So look at this, look at this. I just start pulling, pulling, pulling. And again, at this point, we're going 69 to 70 miles an hour in a 206. It's something that most people would think it's unheard of, but it is doable. Trust me. Uh, we were absolutely flying. You can see all this open space now on the track. Uh, it, it's different feeling when you're all the way in the front. You spent most of the time in the pack, but when you end up in the front in a race like this, your right foot you just keep telling yourself well don't lift and don't do anything and just send it into every turn that you can with no excuse so you can see here the number 27 on his own with a little bit of run uh, Jorge actually also took the run with John also on the inside and now I myself find myself out of the draft and pushed all the way to the back so you can see here there that's four five six seven or eight spots that I lost there all within one turn and th that is how important the draft is when it comes uh, to road racing so now this is Quincy Smith so him and I worked very very well together especially in the second race and you'll see that coming up uh, but again you're trying to do everything you can to try, try to stay with the draft pack, with the pack, and not lose any speed at all. Absolutely not. So I'm here kind of shuffling left and right, trying to find something, trying to find somebody to go with. Luckily, Quincy did, did point on the right, so I said, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and stick right here for now. Which that actually be end up a pivotal move towards the end of the race. Now, this is a little bit further down in the lap. Um, again, I lose a little bit of the vision of the pack, but they, they kind of started going at it just a little bit, and it was just enough to slow them down. And I believe I had Gary Campbell behind me at that moment. He was just pushing me like it was push, push, push. And it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, number 27 here, he's extremely fast, especially on his own. Uh, he, he had the ability to side draft, which is something I definitely need to start working on. Uh, and just hang out with the packs uh, with, his, with his runs all on his own. Again, you saw Gary's cart. Uh, peak right there a little bit on the left uh, but then he very quickly went ahead and shuffled back and pushed me all the way back to that front pack so thank you very much Gary look at this good draft we have a good run now this is going into the final straight of the race nope one more lap so 
again it, it kind of say status quo there for a little bit uh, but we just we just kept going at it uh, again everybody's trying to look for drafting partners and trying to go with someone here this is number 27 again the, the this gentleman was flying Pincy, trying to get him on the back of that TV bumper. You see Heath, you see John's yellow helmet there, and I believe Jorge was leading at this moment. Those guys are from the lay down to six class. And this is just a tease. You see it, you, you see Jorge there leading the race. I'm just there. You, you can almost feel it. You know that the, the, the race is coming uh, to an end soon, so you're just trying to set yourself up. Uh, to try to get a, get a good run here at the end. Again, you see uh, Campbell there on the right-hand side. At that moment, he, you know, he kind of bended that run. He did tuck in right behind me there, uh, following the fast line. Again, number 27, flying on his own. No draft, no nothing. He's just flying. And then everybody's tucking and weaving, and no, nobody's trying to make any mistakes. So knowing I had the last turn here coming up, I'm trying to get a run out on the Alta, trying to get someone to come with me, but there's nobody there at that moment. I felt the bump right about here, and I said, all right, well, here we go. Final straight, I had it. I hit the bumps, it did slow me down, um, and then whoever was behind me abandoned the, the, the run, and then uh, they just ended up uh, passing me. You see that the 902 originally was behind me, and then uh, they went ahead and moved over to the right and left me hanging. So that was about it. Here's another view of the finish. It was absolutely awesome. You see us here coming down the pack. You can see all the shuffling, all the movement, and it was great. So great job, uh, Gary Campbell uh, getting the first place, Quincy getting second place. This is the start of the second race. First thing right off the bat, first thing you do, you start looking, everybody's looking around, find a bumper. Uh, luckily for myself, I was able to find a Jorge's bumper extremely fast. Um, and again, this group of guys, you see Keith there, uh, you see Scott, you see John, we're, we're all there together, we're all there having a good time. So pretty much, it, we're all trying to help each other at this point, and we all got a great start. So we pretty much, I don't want to say checked out, but we locked up early uh, and went ahead and tried to get out as front as you could. No battling, no nothing, just uh, bumper to bumper. Now you do see uh, lift and let go, lift and back in, lift and back in. So. What they actually want you to do is not physically allowed to lock up to another bumper, but they do allow you to bump. So that's why in case you're wondering why he's lifting and letting go. So he's lifting and back in, on and off. It's just because they don't want to see you. If they see you locked up in a bumper for more than a split second or two, uh, you are going to get black flag. It did happen to Ruben. Uh, so again, not only are you racing, but you're also trying to make sure that you don't get a black flag uh, for them thinking that you're pushing too much. A lot of action here. Everybody's just kind of trying to stay side by side, not go anywhere. And again, you're trying to do everything you can to stay on that draft. sucked up see there number 902 um, got left hanging uh, which uh, I mean they were able to get it but you can see the difference of when you're in and out I mean it's literally three to four card difference within a second um, so there was some pushing the shovel we're going three wide in turn one not many places that you get to do this but in rovers especially in the 206 class
the spot change there between uh, Jorge and Miguel. Um, obviously, those guys are brothers, and they're gonna um, they, they race very, very, very well together. So it's it's hard to believe how they know what the other ones are gonna do, uh, but they actually do. Even though when you see them out of the cart, they're usually arguing with each other. Um, but again, trying to stick, uh, oh, trying to help our buddies out here. Um, that 902 27 absolutely great drive by them even though they did get a lot, uh, left out to drive at some point but trying to do everything here that we can to push these TV cards all the way to the front he goes looking back on yeah there he is Now, a little bit up ahead uh, is uh, Quincy and Ruben, uh, I believe. And they are leading the, the, the race at this moment, so. Again, going three wide into turn one. Just a little bit wrong for me. You can see here the pack is kind of starting to pull away. Uh, we do, I do catch up over to uh, Ruben's bumper um, in Quincy right in front, but unfortunately there was a slight checkup right uh, right in front of me here, and the front pack uh, went ahead and just left. So we tried everything we could to uh, try to get him back to the front back and try to get up to the front, uh, but there just was nothing there. Those guys were locked up bumper to bumper. Um, trying to do everything they could to, to make sure that they did not get past uh, but you can see there in the distance that they, they were just gone so that that one or two mile an hour that we lost lost from the end of the draft uh, once you start multiplying that by you know a thousand feet or so um, it really starts to open up a gap uh, on the field and that was pretty much for us um, so thank you again to the car club you're hosting up to the fantastic event if you like what you see Please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to share, like, comment, and come out with us. If you see us uh, at the track, just come come say hello, come give us a shout out. Let us know we do this for fun, we do this for you guys. Um, and again, hit the subscribe button, share, and we'll see you guys next time.